Our top story, budget woes for the city of Chicago. Good morning, I'm Wyatt Dance. Ohio versus Illinois, and it's not college football, it's a bidding war over Sears. In one of the closest elections in history, Mitt Romney reportedly topped Rick Santorum by only eight votes. Reporting from the Iowa Capitol, I'm Wyatt Dans. And I'm Wyatt Dans, a big commotion outside the Dirksen Federal Building where Blagojevich arrived just a short time ago through the tunnel. Newsbeat's Margaret Lang is back from the courthouse. She's live now in the newsroom. Margaret, what was going on down there? Newsbeat's Wyatt Dans begins our live team coverage outside our studio. Hey, Wyatt. Hey, guys. Thank you. Last night at CTA headquarters, there was a public forum where participants got the chance to voice their opinions to CTA President Forrest Claypool about what's turning out to be a pretty controversial budget proposal. Occupy Chicago has a new obstacle, winter. The group admits it will need to create a winter occupation plan. Organizers say this will allow the movement to maintain momentum and protect the health and safety of protesters. A Chicago homeowner shot a suspected burglar who entered his home on the south side this morning. Police say the homeowner shot the intruder with a 22 caliber rifle after hearing noises from the back of the house. Newsbeat's Wyatt Dance is live in the newsroom with the story. Thank you guys. Now imagine paying a cashier and having that person turn around and pocket your money. For some tollway drivers, this was a reality. Our customers expect that when they come through and pay a toll, that that money is going in to support the roads that they're driving on. That's what our business is all about. Christy LaFleur is the executive director of the Illinois Tollway Authority. Recently, 12 toll booth employees have resigned or been fired after an investigation that found $25,000 in tolls had been pocketed by some attendants who were manipulating the free pass policy given to emergency vehicles. The tollway identified uh, a pattern of what appeared to be an abnormally high rate of usage of the emergency vehicle button. We don't typically have emergency vehicles going through the manned lanes anymore. If it's a true emergency, they're going to buzz through the, uh, the I-pass lanes. Jim Wagner is the Inspector General for the Tollway, a position that was created just this year. Alerted to the emergency vehicle irregularities, he and his team took action against the employees who were scamming the system. The majority of the collectors confessed to having done the improper uh, recording of a emergency vehicle decided to resign their position and offered to repay to the tollway uh, what uh, had been determined had been lost. Although the scandal has brought negative attention to the tolls, officials want to remind drivers that the incident involved a few bad apples and is not standard practice at all tolls. I don't think that uh, we have a situation where most of the collectors are operating this way. Most of them are not. But we do have a small group, and we are going to continue to investigate to find that small group. Now, some of the drivers I talked to were already skeptical about where their toll money was going before the scandal broke. One man said he was charged a $200 fine for skipping through a 40-cent toll. He said that's stealing. At the box office, back to you guys. Thank you, Sean. We go from adventure at the box office to adventure on the campaign trail. Republican Herman Cain is out of the presidential race. Hopefully, Caleb Haney can step up and take control. Newsbeat's wide Nan is here with more on sports. I hope he can step up, too. It'll be sad to see their momentum die down after this five-game win streak. But they say defense wins championships, and I guess it's time to find out. The Monsters of the Midway will need to step up in Cutler's absence. Here's the play where Cutler went down. Check it out. Late in the third, he threw a pick, and as he was running to stop it, he dove, got hit, and right about there, that's the injury. If you look at the surrounding areas for all you Columbia College commuters, up here in the north in Waukegan and Evanston, it's pretty solid at about 45 degrees. But as you get away from the lake, out towards O'Hare and Aurora, a little bit colder, 37, 36 degrees. The weather in the Windy City webcast, I'm Wyatt Dans. And I want to do something a little different today. Instead of giving you some sports headlines, this week I'd rather get a little nostalgic and look at some of the best that the world of sports has to offer. Hey, welcome to Windy City Webcast. I'm Wyatt Dans, and I think today we'll talk about some sports. The NBA is back in action after the All-Star break, but let's take a quick break from the post-break action to break you some All-Star stories. The game was competitive, with the West topping the East 152 to 149. Hey, welcome to Windy City Webcast. I'm Wyatt Dans, and today is a great day to talk about some sports. March Madness is over, leaving plenty of room for April anger. Thanks for watching. Check back next week on WindyCityWebcast.tv for another home run. CTA President Forrest Claypool is asking the unions to make cuts to entitlements that he sees as wasteful. 
And it's because of our work rules to basically aid and abet a minority of individuals who abuse the system uh, you know, for their benefit at the expense of everyone else. That costs us $40 million a year in overtime and extra workers to fill in for those who simply don't show up. But employees of the CTA have a different solution. No. You know what I'm saying? Cut your salary. You make $192,000 a year. Cut your salary and see how it feels. I mean, since I started 27 years ago in 1984, the management has doubled. We, we were running trains just fine then. We were running buses just fine then. Some of the cuts that Claypool is targeting come from things such as paid coffee and bathroom breaks, as well as premium pay for employees who decide to work on their birthdays. Some of the CTA employees I talked to said that until the president gets out there and experiences their daily grind, he doesn't know what he's talking about. We're having a dialogue about this, and I think, you know, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding. I think there's a lot of concern, but I think there's also a, a, a common sense approach that we can come together on. Now, the concern for the public is that if these two sides don't come together, that will mean fare hikes, service cuts, and employee layoffs, three things that nobody wants. Live on Michigan Avenue, I'm Wyatt Dans. Now let's go to the newsroom where Margaret Lang has a glimpse into what the public thinks about the situation. Should college athletes be paid? NCAA President Mark Emmert says he's against them being paid, but does support beefing up scholarships that will allow them to live comfortably. The March Madness Tournament pulls in more than $771 million in TV rights alone, and the stars of the show don't see any of that. What's important is that students don't become employees. In basketball especially, work can be a complicated thing. Well, Jay Cutler's down, Caleb Haney's coming in, so I figure I was thinking about going down to Soldier Field, getting the old pigskin out, <laughs> trying my spiral, seeing if I can make the team. I uh, don't think you're quite on the same level, Why? I'd hate to disappoint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd kind of have to second Danielle. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> All right, thanks, Wyatt.